I'm Kathy Coslett and welcome to Cooking Classic. Chef Mark McAndrew joins me tonight. He's from the Career Technology Center in Lackawanna County. And we're going to prepare, and you know, say we're going to prepare uh, <laughs> sure a grilled romaine helpful. salad. Now, you teach at the Career Technology Center right. in the culinary department, but you also have a lot of other things going on. You're really a busy guy. Yeah, well, I also teach down here mm -hmm. at the Institute. Um, I'm a culinary and pastry arts adjunct. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also work for a local caterer in Dunmore called Constantino's. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, 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 do, I do stay busy. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Which do you prefer, if, if there is one? Um, culinary arts, pastry arts? I, I enjoy both, actually. I, mm -hmm. I have great passion for each. But depending on you know, the different t t times of the year, I get more engaged into that uh, with regards to like pastries around the holidays or you know cooking in general but I have equal passion for both actually. I bet you share that too with your students quite a bit that that you can do both well I, I think it's important I, mm -hmm. you're more marketable right um, in this day and age the more skills set you have the better chance of you have getting a, a good job and succeeding so and then how do you take all of that and you and you move it all to the catering business and you just you do it all don't you that's a pretty fast-paced thing isn't it yeah but I, I enjoy it do I, you? I really do yeah yeah I enjoy being busy so what is it there that you enjoy the most where at the catering business well just help helping uh, the owner out he's a really great guy it's a new business or uh -huh. fairly new business um, you get to meet a lot of different people uh -huh. at these events, and it's a little different than different, you know, other aspects of cooking. Mm -hmm. Catering is a little, a little bit different okay. than, you know, versus working in a restaurant. So, uh -huh. now as the grilled romaine, is this something that you've taught in class, whether it be here at Luzerne County Community College or uh, at the Career Technology actually, Center? Actually, both. Yeah. I've incorporated this okay. recipe into um, a class here and also a class uh -huh. back at the. And the students here. really like it. Yeah, it's 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 different. It's it's easy. Okay. Um, and has a really nice presentation, as you'll, as you'll see. Okay. It sounds like something we all might like then. I don't know about you. Different, easy, good presentation. I'm, on, I'm game. So here we go. We'll be back right after this, and we're going to make that salad. Hello, my name is Nicholas. I'm a culinary student at Luzerne County Community College with your culinary tip of the day, boning out a chicken breast. Boning out a chicken breast can save you a great deal of money by the end of the year, and it's simple to do. First, with the boning knife, find the top of the breastbone and follow it all the way down. Until all the meat is released from the bone. Continue the process on the other side. until all the meat is released from the bone. If you prefer it skinless, gently pull back the skin like so with your fingers. And with the bone, if you save it, you can make soups, sauces, and save a great deal of money. And that's my culinary tip of the day, Bon Appetit. I'm Kathy Coslett and this is Cooking Classic. I'm here at the Culinary Arts Institute on the campus of Luzerne County Community College. And Chef Mark McAndrew from the Career Technology Center in Lackawanna County has agreed to join us tonight and to show us how to prepare a grilled romaine salad. Thanks for coming. Oh, no problem, Kathy. So, what's the first step in this? I well, think, there, go ahead. There's a couple components. Um, mm -hmm. The first thing I'm gonna do is make the dressing and then you know put it aside to later refrigerate okay. it and, and this recipe is, is, is very relatively simple a couple mm -hmm. ingredients all right so and then also another component which we're going to do tonight um is candied, candied walnuts. walnuts yeah so, these look really nice so we're going to actually do them here a, okay. as a component for our salad so the first thing i said like we'll do is mm -hmm. the dressing and and then we'll do the candied walnuts all right how can i help you well i can't he's going to you will, you will so the first thing i'm going to add is the buttermilk <laughs> okay all right 
And then mayonnaise. All right, I'm going to sneak that out Thank of there. Thank you. What, you, what made you choose this particular dressing for the well, salad? It, it, you know, it, um, buttermilk dressing is, is, is popular with a, with a lot of different age groups. I have kids, so, uh -huh. you know, they'll eat this. They dip everything in ranch dressing. So if I can get to eat a salad <laughs> right. using ranch dressing. That is true. I have to uh, agree with that. It, it kind of works. Okay. So then that was the chives, the garlic. And now all I'm going to do is just whisk this until it combines. All right, so this actually is done. We're just going to refrigerate that. Okay. And so yeah, about I'll, I'll how right much here. dressing? Well, I guess you really can't say that. That makes about two gonna... cups of dressing. Okay, and that's so usually pretty good a, for how many for people? At least four. Four people. Uh, portions. This is going to be a large portion, as you Okay, see. well, that's all right. All right I like so, large portions. Yeah, right? There we go. So next I'm going to do the, the candied the walnuts. The candied walnuts. So what I have here is mm -hmm. the walnuts and sugar. What we're actually going to do is just caramelize the sugar. Okay. And then, and hence, they'll be mm -hmm. candied. All right, we just got to be careful about the heat. Um, because the sugar we want it to caramelize, we won't, but it's very, mm -hmm. very, can very easily burn or scorch. So we just put them both in at the same time. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. And then um, we just want to stir them. I'm on medium high heat here, and it won't take that long, but huh. we want so it to. you don't put a liquid or anything in there, just the sugar no, no, and the no liquid and the walnuts. We don't need to add water to this or. Now, I've never, I've never done this, this this way, but I know there are other ways of doing it. I've done this in the oven before. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other ways that some, someone may want to try this? You could cook these in, in corn syrup mm -hmm. and then remove them and scatter them over like a bed of sugar and toss them. And they're more like a glazed candied okay. walnut. You can actually toss these with some brown sugar and bake them. Bake them, yeah. I like this because it's more of a candied nut because we're uh -huh. actually making a, a quick candy in the pan. Yeah, and you know what? I have to tell you, these do look really yeah, nice. They do. They, they look really good. do. They look really nice. And it does It does look candied. Yeah, so we, we just want to keep these moving. And, and they add a nice textural element to our salad, some crunch mm -hmm. that, we, that we all like. And some of the sweetness can offset some of the acidic components in our right. dressing. So it's all about balance, Kathy. It's all about balance, is it? It's all about balance. Remember that, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some other things that you might add to this salad outside of some of the ingredients you brought with well, you? Well, we have some toppings we have right now for later. We have some, okay. some red onions, some crumbled bacon, mm -hmm. uh, crumbled blue cheese, some tomatoes, and our, our candied walnuts. But this could be, that could be a nice lunch salad. Right, uh, it or, could. or a salad course. But mm -hmm. then if you want to add a protein to it, mm -hmm. like... Um, Grilled chicken, uh -huh. grilled steak, or uh, you know, uh, grilled shrimp. Even mm -hmm. that becomes an entree salad. I can know? see now that this is um, beginning to. Yeah, it's going to start melting. Melt. And then as soon as it just turns a little amber in color, mm -hmm. we we know that we can remove it from the heat. Uh -huh. And the residual heat is a term called carryover cooking. Will continue to cook. Okay. All right, so that that will help us prevent it from burning okay. once we reset stage. We're going to let these cook, and we're going to take a break. When we return, we'll tell you about the lettuce, and we'll get this salad going, okay? We'll see you in a minute. Are you looking for a college that's right for you? Luzerne County Community College has more than 100 majors to choose from convenient class times, and many online courses. Transfer your degree and continue your education at a four-year college. Work with modern equipment found in the professional world, all at the area's lowest tuition. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Kathy Coslett, and this is Cooking Classic. I'm with Chef Mark McAndrew, and he's about to prepare the lettuce for this grilled romaine salad that he's making, and it's with the buttermilk chive dressing, correct? Right. Yes, All yes, right, you mister, are. here yes, you are. we go. All right, so the first thing I want to do, I have already cleaned this lettuce, which means I've soaked it in some icy water, you know, to remove some of the... <laughs> Um, sand and dirt. Yeah, because that can be pretty dirty sometimes, right? That's well, not a step that should be skipped, correct? Yeah, because, well, there are leaves that grow in layers right. where dirt and sand can get mm -hmm. trapped. And, and it just, you know, it, it takes a little preparation to get it clean. And then you want it to really dry well because okay. we're going to be grilling it. Uh -huh. All right? So I'm going to pull some of these outer leaves off. Mm -hmm. um, Here, if you want to. Yeah, thank you. There you go. And then I'm just going to cut some of these top top part okay. of the head. Now I have to ask you this. Okay. How, why do some people say you shouldn't cut lettuce with a, a knife? Or well, is that silly? Do you want me to get there, rid of this? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a great debate with that among okay. chefs. Um, I think if you use a sharp knife, it's not a bad thing. Uh, tearing the lettuce sometimes keeps it from uh, becoming brown or oxidizing okay. as quickly. Okay. But um, if you're gonna if you're gonna utilize use this it right, right away, away, use the knife. Use okay. the tool that you know okay. it's gonna make it easy for you. Here I'll take that. Alright, so next I'm just gonna cut this from top to bottom, like north to south, not okay. across. And I'm gonna retain um, the core here because that'll hold our lettuce together when we grow okay. it. So that's kind of important. Alright? So I'm just gonna cut so you cut it just in like half that. first. Yeah, well, lengthwise. Right. Okay. So now yeah, I'm just that's pretty. That a bit. So yeah, this makes a really nice presentation. So all right, hold your knife there. Okay. All right. So next, I mean, once again, depending on the size of the lettuce, I could cut this into quarters. Mm -hmm. But I think for today we're going to utilize it this way. Okay. Uh, it makes for a nice presentation. My dogs would be having a heyday right now. They lettuce? love this. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, go that's ahead. Okay, a little flight okay. of ideas there. All right, so next what I'm going to do is prepare this for the grill. All right, so uh -huh. of course we're grilling, so we want to have some oil. All right, mm -hmm. that'll help prevent it from sticking. It'll also help char this for us. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is um, just do a nice char on this. Okay. We don't want to cook the lettuce, okay, because we want to maintain its, you know, its, its texture and right. its crunchiness. But we just want to put a nice charred, smoky flavor okay, on Okay, so it, you're nice going to show us a nice char. Yeah, yeah. So we know where we're and going with this. how long is it going to take? I don't know. It depends on how hot your grill is. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of grills are different and, and don't get as high as other grills with mm -hmm. regards to temperature. So approximately, it could take anywhere from one minute mm -hmm. to four minutes. Okay. Okay? Yeah, but and then, either way, it's pretty fast, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. This is yeah, we, like I said, we don't want to cook it. Just, just okay. put some color on it. And then I'm going to season it because I didn't come seasoned. All right, <laughs> I so didn't a little salt and pepper. Seasoned. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> if you please hand me the pepper. Sure. Because we want to season this. Now, you don't have to get crazy with that oil and get it in between no, the leaves no, no, or no, anything because no. this is really for the outside, right? To bring the flavor in through the other leaves, the char. Well, it's just to help, yeah, char and, and, and also help it from sticking. Okay. We want to try to avoid that. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to take this to the grill. All right. All right. And we're just going to place it on the grill. I don't, have, I don't have to prepare this grill, it's already been prepared, okay? And I'm just going to place it on. So when you say it's already been prepared? It's been oiled. Okay. All right, we had some uh, oil on it, so. Okay. And, and the additional oil is going to also help us. From the lettuce. Prevent sticking, yeah. Now you would use this salad, this could be for lunch, this could be dinner, this could be whatever you want, correct? Right. right. Yeah. Like I said, with the addition of, you know, either meat or uh, yeah, I know. poultry. It's a nice, it's a really nice summer entree salad. It is. I know even in my house, my kids eat this salads all year round, well, all sure. the time. And Dinner. you know what? The romaine's available all year, mm -hmm. all year round. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you, you don't just have to do this in the summer or mm -hmm. compare this in the summer. And romaine is even a bit more, is it, if one lettuce is more healthy than the other, it's a pretty good one, isn't it? I know some, go ahead. I, I don't know about that. I think that all the lettuces are basically about the same. same are they? Because some people water say, content. well, some have more water than others. Well, so I think they're all basically the same. Okay. Well, that's good. Then I can go back to eating the one that I like that yeah, everybody right? said don't. Don't listen to everybody, right? <laughs> that's right. All right, so we're listen almost to there. somebody, Chef Mark McAndrew. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're almost there. All okay. right, so we're getting some nice color on this, as you can see. Let me see a nice char, it's Chef. It's getting there. Okay. Beautiful, yeah. right? Um, we just, maybe another minute or two. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I have a grill at home that's a lot higher than this. Mm -hmm. I, I blew it off already. You wow. know, it okay. Been, but, um, 
Now, you told me something before. How do you tell when that grill is where you want it or if it's too hot? The best way to test, I mean, some grills have the thermometer right. on the door or the lid. That, it's not always accurate because you're opening it and shutting yeah. it. But if you can hold your hand for, if you can't hold your hand as long as a second here, like it's about 500 degrees. Wow. Okay. Somewhere in that area. Okay. You know, if you can hold it for like two seconds, it might be like four, 450. Okay. And then the longer you can hold it, you know, is the gauge uh -huh. for how hot or cold it is. Okay. All right. But just be really careful doing that, okay? Oh, yeah, of don't, course. Don't, like, you touch the grill. Like don't get too close. So, like I said, we don't want to cook this, right? So, mm -hmm. I'm going to remove it now. And we only do the one side, which is going to be it's called the presentation side. Okay. Okay, we don't want to grill it on both sides because, like we said, there's a lot of water here. Right. To start, you know, cooking and getting soft okay. on us. So, we want to keep that texture. All right. Let's take a quick break, if you will. And when we come back, we're going to have that on the plate, and we'll get the whole thing together. And wait until you see this. It's terrific. We'll be back in just a moment. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Kathy Coslett, and this is Chef Mark McAndrew from the Career Technology Center in Lackawanna County. And Chef Mark is about to compose his grilled romaine salad with buttermilk chive dressing. Yes, I and am. it's looking good. He already started. All right, so we just took the, the romaine off the mm -hmm. grill and we hit it with a little Parmesan cheese as soon as it comes off the grill. We hit it All right? with a little Parmesan yes, cheese. Yes, we did. We hit it. And then now we're going to dress it. I'm going to dress the salad okay. and put on some of our toppings. So, right, this is the buttermilk chive. Buttermilk chive dressing. All right, this that is looks little, really good. Yeah, it is, and, and it's it's a thin dressing. It's not too heavy. Okay, and then next we're just going to put an assortment of toppings, okay. whatever your favorites are. Of course, we're going to use the candied walnuts. The candied that we walnuts. Made, all right, but I'd probably put first put on some tomatoes. Okay. I really like those little tomatoes. The grape tomatoes. Yeah, yeah I do, tomato, and the right? yellow ones. Oh yeah. Yeah, I really like those. That's a snack for me at work. I bring bags of those. Nice. All right. And then I'm going to use a little mm -hmm. red onion, just a little. I like that you um, chopped that, too. Sometimes that annoys me. I, I don't like big pieces Yeah, either. me either. It really is. It's, it's messy, isn't it? You have to cut this and eat it, and then you're trying yeah. to cut that. And it's overpowering, too. Mm -hmm. And then some bacon, little bacon bits on here. These look good. Yeah, you did these, these on your own too, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I, I took bacon and I cut it up yeah. in small pieces and I um, cooked it mm -hmm. in, in a saute pan. All right, and then some crumbled blue cheese. And we'll finish with the candied walnuts. With the candied walnuts. This looks absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful color. Yeah, nice presentation. Yeah, it really does. Okay. I'm just going to take this right out of the way. Great. Okay, so there it is. There it is. It, it looks magnificent. Oh, I was going to eat that. Oh, sorry. You can have the whole salad. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I wanted that walnut. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. That looks absolutely delicious. I'm so glad you were with us tonight. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, and thank I hope you you'll much. come back. Sure, yeah, sure. That was terrific. Thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in. This is Cooking Classic. I'm Kathy Coslett, and this is Executive Chef Dave Pembleton. Hello. For those of you who just tuned in, we are on the set of the Culinary Arts Institute on the campus of Luzerne County Community College. And Executive Chef Dave is going to talk to us about knives. We're going to go through the knives, tell you what knife is which and used for what, and sharpen, and everything you need to know about knives. Okay. Ta -da. Okay. 
Kathy, this is a basic knife set that we use here at the school. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, our thing is if you're going to uh, go out there in the industry, you need to have good tools. So we uh, suggest that they buy their own. Okay, and these these are some of the knives that we use here. And this is the, the, the these are the basic knives. Okay. And this one is a serrated knife. And this one we use only for two things: cutting bread and okay. cutting tomatoes. And you don't need to sharpen the, this one. This is a, a stay sharp all the time. And if you tried to sharpen it, you would actually wear the points off. So that's one of the knives we use here. Why does serrated work best for bread and tomatoes? Because they stay really sharp on, right on those edges and they, they slide straight through the bread without tearing it okay. and it slides straight through a tomato without, without It's funny tearing because it. I bet a lot of people would think that because it's serrated to bring it through bread, it would tear it, but it's just the opposite. Right, and I've seen people try to use these things for other things and it just doesn't work. Okay? <laughs> just the opposite. Now this is something you might not see yeah. at your house. This is a, a, a slicing knife and it's made for slicing meats, like mm. roast beef, prime rib, and those types of things. Uh, so it's just the right size to go through a prime rib yeah. and, uh, or through a large piece of beef. Uh, it's not something you see every day in, in, the, in, in your home, but at the, at the, at the institute here, uh -huh. we're teaching people to go out there into the industry. And you notice these are very, very well-made knives. You notice that the steel goes all the way down through the handle. Okay. okay? You notice it's bolstered. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a good sign of a good knife, one that feels good mm -hmm. in your hand. Um, so that's a slicing knife. Not used all that much, but a necessary component. What should, what's the price of a good knife? Like, what's the range? It because, depends what it is. I yeah. mean, you can, buy, you can buy a decent chef's knife. This is the one that we use most often. It's mm -hmm. called a chef's knife or a, a French knife or it's a, you know, all-around knife. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pay anywhere from 40 or $50 from that knife uh, up to two or $300. Yeah. I've you know? seen them even higher than that in some of the catalogs we get at home. They'll right. knock your socks off. Right. But a good knife, like anything else, mm -hmm. you get what you pay for. Right. Okay. So if you want, if you want a high-grade steel, with, a, with a, a, a steel that runs all the way down through the oh, knife yeah. and a good handle, mm -hmm. you have to pay for it, okay? okay? Uh, this is the one that we use most often in the, in the food service industry. It's called the chef's knife. And this is used for just about everything in the food service industry. Okay. Cutting through onions, cutting through carrots, you know, your basic uh, mirepoix, you know, all those types of things. Not for opening cans, though. You know, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen some people try to open cans with them, and it just damages your knife. Oh so once gosh. you buy a good set of knives, That's you want to take care crazy. of them. Okay? This okay. is a boning knife, and you see that it has a nice flexible mm -hmm. blade. And this is for boning out fish, getting chicken off the bones, uh, boning out different pieces of beef, those types of things. So anything, uh, anything where mm -hmm. you need to do those types of things, okay? And the last but not least uh, is a paring, paring knife. knife. And this is used for all those little jobs like making little garnitures, mm -hmm. uh, cutting uh, the, the core out of a tomato, uh, cutting small salad things and those peeling apples. Things. Peeling apples, yes, absolutely. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I love apples. So <laughs> yes, it's used for all those types of things. Mm -hmm. And for me, these are all the basic knives that you really need. Okay. Uh, if, if you're going to out, go out and purchase them. So these are the basic knives that we need. What's the lifespan of these basic knives? Well, that depends. Mm -hmm. That depends how well you take care of them. All right. Uh, I had a set of knives out in the industry. I was out in the industry for 19 years, mm -hmm. and that set of knives is still good, and I've been here 18 years. Wow. So it's mm -hmm. a good set of knives if you buy good mm -hmm. stuff and you take care of them can, can last okay. a lifetime. So what does taking care of a good set of knives mean? What should we be doing with well, these? Well, we, we have a case that we keep them in a case, okay. or in, at your home you have a butcher block. That's okay. a good idea. And that uh, is all right. I think it is. Okay. At home, you know, uh, for us, we have to transport them back and forth. So mm -hmm. we have a nice little roll-up bag, and we have these little plastic sheaths that go on the outside to, to mm -hmm. protect the student, and they slide nicely in the case. Okay. And by doing that and keeping the knife sharp, I think you have a, a, a better uh, chance of keeping the knives in, in good shape for a very long time. And there is definitely the right way to keep a knife sharp, correct? Otherwise, so. you're going to destroy the knife, I right? I think so, yes. When I, was in the, when I first started in the industry, uh, we used to send our knives out to be sharpened, and the way those gentlemen sharpened the knives, they had a belt sander, mm -hmm. and they would turn it upside down with fine grade sandpaper, and they would run the blade along the belt sander, and you would see sparks fly oh off of it. Oh my gosh. And it would he sharpen looks the good, knife. doesn't he, for somebody that's been around <laughs> yeah. that long? Huh? Yeah, uh, but <laughs> if, if you sharpen it with a belt sander, if you have a, good, a really good knife, mm -hmm. it wears away a lot of the metal. Mm. And then the life, just like you're saying, the lifetime it's of the, uh, it, it doesn't last as yeah. long. Okay. So okay. I like using what we're going to use okay. here today, a, a tri stone. All right. Show us how to use this. Okay. This is a tri stone, and what we do is we're going to put a little bit of mineral oil on it. 
You All can't right. use regular oil. I have to ask you this though. Why do they call it a tri stone? Because there's three different there's three different grades of the stone that we're going to use. Okay. It starts with a very core stone, goes to a medium core stone, and then it goes to a ceramic hmm. honer on the other side. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do is we're going to take. I'm just going to use this knife because this is the one we're going to use. We're going to use today. Okay. Mm -hmm. and what you want to do is you want to. They say the correct angle is like a 21 degree angle or a 23 degree angle. I don't know. I'm not that smart. So I just start here. We start here about halfway like so. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go up the stone. Okay. Do you have to push like real so. hard or anything? No, I'm not pushing down too hard. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to kind of count how many times I do it there. And I'm going to try to do it the same on the other side. And if you notice, if you... How? I'm trying to do it the same amount of times on each mm -hmm. on each thing. And how far back do you go? Do you go all I the go way all to the, the way, bottom? All the way to the bottom where the where the cutting edge ends. Okay. Mm -hmm. This knife has a, a piece of steel that comes down that kind of lets you feel that. Okay? okay. So that's what we're looking to do. And then after we're done with with that part of the stone, then we're going to turn it over. So about how many times again do you do that? Well, it depends how much work it needs. If if I've kept my knife pretty good I mean it won't take that many times but I've seen knives that have been abused yeah. it might take you 30 or 40 or 50 times to get it to get well, it how right. often should you do that if well, you're cooking regularly I tell my students when they start in the kitchen mm -hmm. to do this first oh, all right when they come into the kitchen start with a start with a very sharp knife then the works a lot easier mm -hmm. you cut yourself more times with a dull knife than you ever will a sharp okay. knife okay and that's because you're pushing harder and right okay. you know and there's more of a chance if you have a dull knife for it to kind of bounce off the food mm -hmm. product and when it cuts you if you get cut with a dull knife it kind of bashes your skin in mm. and then it's hard to repair it where with a sharp knife it's a very very e okay. even cut All and right. i know that's you're not probably liking that too yeah, much like, but in our industry that have to talk about that's that. kind of what happens okay <laughs> Sometimes we, we cut ourselves. Okay, and this is the very last stone. Okay. okay and can you hand me that towel over there? Sure. And then after you're all done doing this however many times you think you need to go, then we have to wipe it off okay. because you're going to see that there is some oh, yeah. residual uh, okay. from the stone. Okay. So we'll go from there. And then after we do that, Kathy, mm -hmm. this is something that we call a steel in the, in the industry. And this doesn't sharpen the knife, but it keeps a nice edge on the knife. Okay. As you're cutting things, little uh, microscopic particles align themselves on the light on the knife and they make the knife a little dull. Okay. So every once in a while we do this. Okay. okay? And I tell the students to start out very slow mm -hmm. and to keep their fingers behind this guard. Can you see the yeah, marks in the guard? I can. Yeah. You know you understand where I'm coming from. Right. And we're gonna do this a few times.